But we're going to begin tonight with that alleged terror plot and the chilling plan. The FBI says it stopped before it could be carried out. A plan to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and then what they were planning to do to her. 13 suspects arrested, including seven alleged members of a right-wing militia group. The FBI and state authorities conducting a series of raids in Michigan. Those 13 suspects taken into custody, seven of them alleged members of that right-wing militia group. Governor Whitmer has been the target of protests since last spring over restrictions aimed to stop the spread of COVID amid one of the early outbreaks. Michigan, of course, a hot spot at the time. Hot nightmarish. Earlier today, Attorney General Dana Nessel was joined by officials from the Department of Justice and the FBI to announce state and federal charges against 13 members of two militia groups who were preparing to kidnap and possibly kill me. The FBI and state police seen here raiding a home and detaining an individual took action after the men met this week to exchange tactical gear and to pool their okay. money to allegedly buy explosives. The mission? attack the governor before election day. Authorities claim the planning was months in the making, with the men even going to the governor's vacation home twice to conduct surveillance. Two of the suspects allegedly had a plan to create a diversion. Discussed detonating explosive devices to divert police from the area of the home. This is a highly dangerous group. They were well armed, they were training, they had a plan, uh, and they were prepared to carry out their attack. According to the FBI, the men were apparently angry because of Governor Whitmer's restrictions during the coronavirus pandemic, including those on gyms. Tensions have been high in Michigan for weeks, with militia members, some of them armed, at one point descending on the state house last spring, intimidating lawmakers. The FBI infiltrated and wiretapped one of the groups after getting a tip that the men were allegedly plotting against police and planning to attack the state capitol in an attempt to overthrow the government. With an informant listening in, they call Whitmer a tyrant. One of the suspects saying, snatch and grab the governor. Just grab the expletive. They allegedly wanted to take her to a secret location in Wisconsin for a trial, a trial that would end in execution. All of us in Michigan can disagree about politics, but those disagreements should never, ever amount to violence. Let's start things off though here at five with local four defender Sean Lay on the charges and the specifics of this alleged plot. Sean, uh, these details are just mind boggling. Mind boggling, breathtaking. Some may say the neighbors can't believe them, but what we're talking about is a group accused of wanting to storm the Capitol in the most violent way, start some sort of civil war. And you just laid out that this alleged plot about using a taser to abduct or kidnap Governor Whitmer, the FBI, following this along every step of the way. And they moved in last night in a big way. Adam Fox, Barry Croft, Ty Garbin, Caleb Franks, Daniel Harris and Brandon Caserta conspired to kidnap the governor from her vacation home in the Western District of Michigan before the number of her election. Neighbor photos showing FBI raids going down all over Metro Detroit and all over the state targeting multiple men who the feds say were targeting Governor Whitmer to kidnap her. You heard the name Caleb Franks. He lives right here on Holbrook in Waterford. A neighborhood watched as an armored vehicle pulled up last night and a jaw-dropping raid was on. It's definitely not the sort of thing you see every day. It's not every day you see the FBI raid your neighbor's house, especially when you find I know it's a plot to kidnap the governor. The feds say it all started with some very real, very alarming chatter on social media about acts of violence targeting states that two men believed were violating the Constitution, clearly during COVID-19 shutdowns. The FBI says that turned into a recruitment effort at a Second Amendment rally in Lansing, and that turned into meetings. And the FBI was able to listen in and had undercover agents recording conversations. And they watched as plans turned into actual training and said the the men had a clear and real plan to, quote, snatch the governor as she arrived at her vacation home. The complaint further alleges that Fox purchased a taser for use in the kidnapping and that the group successfully detonated an improvised explosive device wrapped with shrapnel to test its anti-personnel capabilities. 
back here live. Terrorism charges, conspiracy, weapons charges, just to name a few. We're live here in Heartland. This is the home of Ty Garber. You see behind me the FBI moving in in a big, aggressive way last night to serve a search warrant here. And here in the other homes we stopped out of the other suspects, the neighbors all say the same thing, that these guys were extremely quiet, never tipped their hand, never spoke of any of this as they're absolutely shocked. First, they're hearing about this. Neighborhoods in shock. Much more. More than a dozen suspects are now in custody, and tonight we're learning about the extraordinary measures taken to keep Governor Whitmer safe. Here's CBS's Jeff Pegues. With the suspects behind bars, new details are emerging about how much of a threat the group, some of them seen at armed protests in the state capitol, posed to Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, at times, she and her family had been moved around. Uh, as a result of activities that, um, you know, law enforcement was aware of. Today, news of another arrest in South Carolina. Paul Edward Bellar charged with providing material support for terrorist acts in Michigan. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. One of the in this video, one of the other suspects, Brandon Caserta, is wearing a Hawaiian shirt, similar to what the so-called Boogaloo Boy adherents wear. CBS News obtained this FBI bulletin that went out last week warning that anti-government extremists are potentially focused on sparking violence in the next three months up to the January 2021 inauguration and that presidential elections could be a flashpoint. Boo, boo, boo. Groups that track militia movements estimate that there are about 200 across the country. There are mounting questions now over an alleged plot to overthrow Michigan state government and kidnap the governor. Six men connected with a right wing group are charged with attempting to carry out an elaborate plan to kidnap Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer for what they call treason. Seven other suspects are charged with providing material support. CBS News Chief Justice and Homeland Security correspondent Jeff Begays has that story. According to an FBI affidavit, the alleged conspirators met in a room under a trap door in a home, spent the summer training with firearms and explosives, and tried to recruit 200 men to storm the state capitol building and take hostages, including Governor Whitmer, who they planned to try for treason. The alleged conspirators used operational security measures, including communicating by encrypted messaging platforms and used code words and phrases. Prosecutors say the group eventually decided to kidnap Whitmer at her vacation home, even going so far as to conduct surveillance there. One of the alleged ringleaders, Adam Fox, said that Governor Whitmer has uncontrolled power right now and described the plan as a snatch and grab. Another, Barry Croft, later stated, all good things must come to an end. Governor Whitmer has faced significant pressure from right-wing groups for her refusal to lift strict coronavirus lockdowns, something that also made her a favorite target of President Trump, who in April tweeted, liberate Michigan. Later that month, two of the suspects are seen at the Capitol with armed militia groups that have been storming the building to fight pandemic restrictions. Some of the suspects were also visible online, their social media accounts riddled with anti-government and pro-gun views. These politicians that keep robbing us and taking our money. But information gathered through confidential informants is what ultimately foiled their alleged plot. Well, they've been on this case for months now because they were able to infiltrate, infiltrate the group. They had confidential informants, uh, they had undercover operatives, they had recordings. So they were on top of this case and they really threw a lot of resources at it uh, because this was serious. I talked to my sources yesterday trying to get a feel for, you know, was this something that they really could have pulled off, this militia group? Could they really have done this? And my sources were telling me, yeah, this is, this is a serious plot. Uh, they had the capability to pull off what they were talking about. Uh, and that is why you saw the FBI throw all these resources, all that manpower at this case. Jeff, uh, back in February, as you know, the FBI created a domestic hate and crimes terrorism fusion cell to investigate cases that involve working undercover.